The regular season comes to a close today, and the results of the final five matches could spell the fates of every team's postseason. Reaper leads the charge for Cloud9 as they're about to face Flame and the rest of FlyQuest today. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the NALCS Countdown, where for 30 minutes we look at the race for the MVP and predict the playoff picture until the timer reaches zero and we jump into Champion Select. Let's get into the schedule for the day. Up first, Cloud9 aim to acquire a playoff bye with a win over FlyQuest, followed by Clutch Gaming vying to do the same versus Golden Guardians. With Echo Fox aiming to secure the top seed as they face 100 Thieves later in the day. If we have tiebreakers, we'll be bringing you those immediately following our last regularly scheduled game. So make sure you've cleared your schedule and are ready to go the distance with us today. Yeah, we got now, a lot results, of Yeah, we got oh. a ton of games to come. Now, the results of those matches could shake up the top six. As you see, the Echo Fox could still lose first place to either 100 Thieves or Cloud9. With the other first round by still technically attainable by the likes of Clutch Gaming, Team Liquid, and TSM. From 1,024 scenarios, there are only 32 combinations left, with just one that results in five tiebreaker games at the end of the day. Yeah, and there's a lot of scenarios that could actually happen here. So if we talk about the one that would require the five-way tie for a playoff buy, it hinges on FlyQuest beating C9. And C9 has actually only picked up three wins in the second half of the season, so that's possible. And then after that, all of these things feel like they could happen, right? Clutch Gaming, TSM, Echo Fox, and TL all have more wins than their opposition right now. So this is a fairly realistic possibility for a five-way tie. Another scenario that is also fairly likely would be a four-way tie for third. That's C9 winning. And then pretty much the same thing happening on your way down. So another relatively likely scenario. So you're almost wondering, like, if there are upsets, we're actually less likely to get some of these big tiebreaker scenarios. Right? Yeah, so many playoff teams playing non-playoff teams, and the scenarios are if the playoff teams win against their, you know, favored opponents, then they get tiebreaker. So pretty likely we're going to get some extra games. But have no fear. We've got our handy-dandy sheets here. We'll, so we'll, we'll update sheet. you. We'll yeah. sheet, as we call it here on the NALCS. The way it works so we'll is after... <laughs> we don't need to explain it. If you do would like really your cool. foldy sheet, oh, I'm my sure goodness. we can get someone so, to, to tweet one of these out. Depending on what happens with FlyQuest and C9, we literally fold the sheet in half along that line, and then you only have that many scenarios left. Right? How a foldy sheet works? Yeah. James is a madman. He tears them. You can yeah, absolutely I tear. I don't it fold so. throughout the day until it all makes sense. Either way, color we will we'll so keep really you updated useful. as the results come in throughout the day. Now, what was once a very clear top two versus the rest of the league has now made the conversation around the top six more complicated, highlighted by the records of the teams on the second half of the split. Here you see 100 Thieves. Seven and one, looking hot. Yeah, you would think they're the best team in the league based off that, and they're kind of showing it now. They're in a position that they can potentially tie Echo Fox uh, if they beat them here today. So that's actually huge that they would rally all the way up to the number one team potentially. Yeah, and there is a chance there that they can still be the number one seed. Uh, because of the way the tiebreakers work out actually, uh, 100 Thieves, wants to root against C9 early on, because that mm. way they can still get first. Get Otherwise, the three-way ties yeah. get broken in some kind of strange ways. But Cody's son has been a guy. He actually hasn't had a game where he's died more than once in the second half of the split. Afromu has been a stellar support, finding his home on more playmakers. And they've been winning games faster than they were in the first half. The first half of the year was a lot of the game is even for 40 minutes and then they kind of win. Now they've actually been winning in 30. Straight up five. winning. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We move right along. We find C9, one of our teams that's faltering at the top of the table. Yeah, three and five in the back half of the split. Not looking good at all. And it's a series of problems kind of showing up all at once. There's the tank meta change, which seems to have destroyed their strap strategy, where they always gave mm -hmm. Licorice counterpick and carry versus carry. And then they would play around him. They started playing more around bot lane, and they started getting the same leads. But then their team fighting suffered a lot now that your main frontliner is Licorice, kind of, and he's having a hard time getting involved with TPs. Sven has continued to die the most, so he's mm -hmm. getting picked off all over the place. And then it feels like the bot lane is starting to fall apart a little bit more often here. Ten deaths yesterday. Smoothies died, you know, over three times a number of uh, occasions in the last half yeah. of the split. Yeah, next team, Team Liquid, they did secure their playoff spot, at least mm -hmm. yesterday, with a win from a deficit as well. Yeah, it was the biggest deficit they've overcome at 10 minutes. If you remember, X Smithy was getting blasted early on in the jungle by Sven Skarin in that C9 game yesterday. And they've actually had back-to-back -back quality wins. They beat Clutch as well as that C9 game yesterday. And if they hadn't have done that, 
We would be talking today about whether or not CLG would be able to overtake them at the back half of the season, but now we're talking about them potentially still being able to get a playoff by or be a third seed, which would give them side selection in that quarterfinal matchup. So a very late season season surge, I guess I would call it, because mm -hmm. they have beaten two of the playoff teams, which a lot of these other people actually haven't done in the last few games. Right. Yeah, win over Optic today would go a long way in terms of moving them up the standings. As the playoffs approach, that means the MVP race is not far off. So we gathered some of the fans to get their vote for most valuable player. Spring split MVP, I got to give it to Cody's son. Cody's son, you know, bringing a team that hasn't really had a lot of notoriety up to the top. He is just so consistent with his carrying abilities. All tech, because he has been performing really good in the season. I think Sneaky would be MVP um, for this split. I mean, Dark Elementalist Lux, come on. Smoothie is going to win uh, an ALCS MVP award this split. C9 Smoothie. I mean, he keeps Sneaky safe all the time. And, I mean, he's been saving his whole team over and over and over again. What do you think? Initial reactions? All tech? Yeah. Did I hear an all tech? You did yeah. hear an all tech in there. Yeah. I got to say that the MVP race this year is super unclear. So I'm not surprised yeah. by hearing That's true. any of those results because a lot of times when we talk about MVP, we're thinking like best player, best team. Yep. Every team is within a win of each other, so it's right. six teams well, that you're now pulling MVP candidates. And we had a couple front runners about that midway point of the split, and then yeah. those front runners are on the teams that are now struggling on the second half of the split, while others kind of make their surge to prominence, and that's and that's kind of attributing or contributing rather to yeah. the difficulty of this discussion. But we began this discussion back in week five, and I kind of want to revisit some of the players that we talked mm -hmm. about. Those two front runners, of course, being Smoothie and Hooney. What are our thoughts on these two guys now? I mean, there's almost nobody that you can put out as an MVP candidate that you don't have something to hold against them. So recently, Smoothie's been dying all the time. He was supposed to be the big playmaker for the team. He was roaming all over the map, but with their current downward trajectory in the back half of the split, he's a big contributor kind of for that. Yeah, and I gave Smoothie the mid-season MVP when they were eight and one through nine games, but now that they are three and five since then, I think it's safe to say that they are trending down because his playmaking hasn't been leading to victories right. and hasn't been creating positive plays in the mid and late game for a shot caller as well. So he is definitely trending down, even though he's still absolutely in the race. Ten deaths over the last two games. Hooney, though, as well, on an Echo Fox roster, even when he seems to have some standout performances, the team continues to struggle in the new meta. Yeah, both Smoothie and Hooney at a certain point in the split were my runaway MVPs, especially mm -hmm. after Hooney had beaten C9 and moved them to 9-1 and one in clear possession of first place. But recently, with the way the top lane has been going and Hooney not being able to transition his early game leads and Echo Fox losing a lot of those games, he's definitely trending down for being what I had as a unanimous MVP. All right, that moves us to the ones that are either trending up or towing the line. Febovin <laughs> being the big one here. True to Clutch's, uh, yeah. I guess, entire season you, you, is you that see, he sits in that middle ground. Right. He's just like the team. He is unbelievably consistent. If you look at his score yeah. lines, while we're talking about Smoothie trending downwards and some bad games by Hooney, even in their losses, 2-0 and 1 on Zoe, 1-1 one, one and 2 on Corky, 3-1 and 3 on Oriana. There's almost never a game where Fevevin looks bad, but there's not that many games where he really leaps out at you and say, oh my god, he just hard carried that game. And so he's kind of one of the sleeper MVP he wants to talk about because Clutch has the ability here to finish second. That would be huge. He's obviously their best player, uh, but he's just not necessarily their biggest playmaker. Flip side of that argument is players like Aframu, right, who yeah. consistently make plays that you feel might win the game. And listen, we heard from some of the fans talking about Cody Sun as an MVP candidate, and when you look at the stats, you can absolutely make that argument. Argument, but you look at Aframu and the history he has of playing with other 80 carries like Doublelift, who's been an MVP candidate in the past, like Stixay, who when he went to MSI, many people were calling the best 80 carry at the tournament, other players that were there. So Aframu can make people good. And he's also the one making so many plays for 100 Thieves who still have a chance to finish first in the regular season as a new organization that a lot of people were kind of putting around the middle of the pack. The only thing I'd throw onto that as well is that he was also a big reason in their wins in the mid uh, early season when they were struggling to find an identity. He was the kind of voice mm -hmm. of reason in the late game. And it's also crazy to say that with the start that TSM had, the oh, winningest goodness. MVP or the all-time leader in MVP uh, he was for the never... league, Bjergsen, is actually in the running this time around. He was never bad. People just uh, were hating on him at the start Mark. of the season just because they don't like him and they're voter fatigue. And... Here's what I'll say. Bjergsen always improves on where he is weak. And I think at the start of the season, he didn't have lane pressure and his warding stats were atrocious and he wasn't contributing to TSM success. Mm -hmm. He has had an amazing last stretch of games. So the last 
the second half of the second half of the season, Bjergsen has been super, super good. But when you're looking at the cumulative results, because he has been so great recently, does not mean he was also great when he wasn't playing well. So yep. uh, he actually has entered the conversation because of how far it's moved up. But do not discount the early season just because you remember him being so good long ago. And that's the thing. We don't have to get into the discussion. But, of course, so much of the MVP comes down to what you as an individual in casting your ba ballot rather Absolutely. value in a player, the consistency, those highs or those lows and, and whatnot. But the MVP vote begins Monday with the winner being announced on finals weekend right here on the NALCS Countdown. We're going to step away, but when we return, we hear from Cloud9's coach, and I gather one last pair of win conditions for the regular season. As we go to break, let's tune in on this week's mic check, which listens in on TSM versus Cloud9. Get in the f***ing lobby, you potato. I should, bring a, I should bring a straw on stage. I'm ruling it in my water bottle, so I don't have to... Put it all the way up. That's if you have like a really long straw, you can just have it in your mouth at all times and just, <laughs> just suck whenever you want some water. Yeah, that sounds good. That means that means uh, hello in Korean. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, can you hear me in Korean? Actually, that's what it means. I can feel the caffeine is kicking in right now. <laughs> Jensen, hello. hey man, you have a brain today? Nope. Nope. Chance! Chance! Turn that king brain on. King your brain. We have to win for Dennis. I'm gonna walk up. Okay, look, look at Varys. Look at Varys. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, ready? 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 Okay. I can go. I can go. Just no, 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 I'm all in. I'm all in. Nice. First flash. I'm going. I'm going. Varys. My Varys. Nice. Good job. First flash. First flash. Go. 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 Get back. Try after. Nice. If Kha'Zix shows up against me, I'm just gonna straight one-shot him. Look at Suda mid, yeah. Trading a bit, okay. bro. Okay. He's looking for a stealth on you. Um, He's going... He's in this bush. They know, they know, they know. Nice, 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 nice. good. Let's go in, let's go in. Everyone go on blitz, no flash right now. He has cleanse. I'm warning over. Oh, oh I can just go on. No, Jensen, no, Jensen. Ah, it's a cleanse. Oh, we can go here, we can go! Oh, maybe the flash, flash, maybe I'll 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 Trap pointing. I'm not coming in, I'm not, I'm not there. Push to Johnny. Oh, just take for me. To Yai's here, Kai's here. I'm running. Got him, got him. He's out, he's out. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, Shen Old, Shen Old. Nice, nice, nice. Holy. He's back, he's back. We're forced, we're forced. Can we go bear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pull someone, like, run back. I'm looking, I'm looking. 5k. All right, I'm going. Kill Blitz. And still, stay taking Baron. Stay taking Baron. Keep taking Baron. OK. Can't press here. Finish Baron. Can't press here. Can't press here now. I'm starting. I'm not Finish, finish, finish. Finish it, finish it now. Nice, nice, nice. Because this is useless. I won't show him. How are you feeling, Jensen? Huh? How are you feeling? Great. Okay, Ulti Mao. No, 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 Welcome back to the NALCS Countdown. We're about 12 and a half minutes away from Champion Select, and it's time for one more Jat Stats. I only have two questions. Today. Only Ooh, two, thank yeah. God. I'm going right, so right. easy on us, sorry. Uh, yeah, and this is also an easy question because there are two correct answers. Fewest Ooh. kills in the LCS for a non-support player who's played 17 games. So okay, there so are two none players, of the subs this is not no historical. That's this split, this not split. historical. Okay. Two players are tied for eight. Quick, I'm gonna kills. do some math. Two yeah. players on are tied for Yeah, we have all the games. You just have to name one of them. I feel all like right. Flame. I don't know, actually. So I'm gonna say one of them should be a jungler. Yeah, sure. that would make sense. Mm -hmm. So then you're looking at somebody like Onda, who probably doesn't have too many kills. Onda hasn't played all the games. So he hasn't right. oh, that's he true. Doesn't careful, so he doesn't count. I just saved your life. Thank you so much, Mark. Uh Oh, god, oh my so god, who are the rest of the junglers in the league? <laughs> well, I mean, it's like, it's like Lyra, 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 Lyra. Yeah. I'm gonna go with Lyra. I like Lyra, Lyra. too. Let's pull up the answers, see what happened. Did we get one? Did we get it? Pull up the answers. Lyra! Yeah. It's both junglers, Woo! too. Good job. Well done, Ooh, yeah. Mark. Ooh. We're amazing. All right, well, next question then, since you're apparently good at this game now. Okay. So good. Uh, who has the lowest forward percentage in the league? Of all players. All players. So it's like who any lane, could be a jungler. Player. Who is the biggest turret hugger in the league? 
And this is not four no, no game restrictions, right? Four percentage is the highest percentage, mm -hmm. or the percentage of time you spend beyond Across fifty percent mark between three and fifteen minutes. So it's like a laning phase. Step. Right. So I mean, so it's like Cody actually plays pretty. Yeah. So lane, so potentially a laner, like a mid laner who gets pushed. There's in also the constantly like, like you're yeah. including junglers in this, right? Because there's some junglers who just like well, like don't go into high, like high losing lanes. I he feel like we get lot. pushed. He does get. Do, does that count then if you go into the river? It, if you're, it's, it's beyond depends. the halfway point. If you go yeah. through certain so if padding. you're on their side, it's four percent. I'll say Z. I feel like he's just always under his turret. Oh, that's Gendo. a good one. Oh, then, oh, but Dokla. Does Dokla? Can I Every use player Dokla? is he said every game. player. Dokla. So. Yeah. Close. Febevin. It was a mid laner. What? Was but that actually is the that's last surprising. mid laner yeah. I, I wouldn't have chosen him. That's pretty much. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> you didn't swear. So <laughs> I did you not no swear. longer get oh. to contribute to the swear Ooh. jar. This jar contributes to more JAT stats. All right, yeah, that's, that's great. like. That's like, great, Jack. Yeah. Like half my paycheck. But here's the thing: right you've been that, that I put into that jar over the course <laughs> yeah. of this uh, split. Here's the thing: you've been bullying us all split long with these stats. We got yeah. the last one wrong again. You did. I'm sick of it. So I'm, sick I'm of it taking too. over. That's my boy, let's, Mark. Let's get control back. Get him, Mark. We're doing Mark facts. Ooh, Mark facts. Yeah, here's well, there the it is. We had a graphic made and everything. Uh, this is maybe less you than make miracle. It up. <laughs> like no. All, All right, right, so here's one for you. We had okay. Kobe on the desk. He was great, by the way. What a joy. He gave you Kobe stats fantastic. that were gave, super easy. He gave us nice yeah. Kobe stats. One of Kobe. them was that he was a, a former pro player, now turned caster, who okay. won a gold medal at WCG. Okay. There's another former pro player turned caster who played at WCG in 2011. Who got knocked out in the quarterfinals? Who, Who would it? that be? Who would that be? Huh? Scar is a caster, right? What? He, he got knocked out. I don't yeah. know. No, I don't see him. Scar is a caster. Have you seen him on Riot Games? I'm a right? PewDiePie yeah. as a host. I haven't seen them on Riot Games. Uh, host on casters. You guys have made that painfully yeah. clear to me. <laughs> so. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Scar or PewDiePie. Oh, sorry, Jack. You're gonna miss that one. It's you. It's you, Jack. Ooh. The results here. I think right, man. And Cutie hey, that's okay. Hey, and Stark boy, about boy, as hot as we did. I don't see them anywhere on this they broadcast all lost. anymore. They all no. lost. All right. They have, they have been all right. Right. That's, that's 0 for 1. Yeah, I feel really bad for you, so I'll give you I one. Challenge. <laughs> <laughs> I challenge. I challenge. Yeah, where's the flag, the red can flag? I, can I get an official ruling yeah. on that yeah. one? All right, uh, give me the next one. I got you're it. You're wrong. All right, all right. So the next yeah. one, you play a lot of Morgana and solo queue. Yeah, uh, I do, mid lane. You, yeah, you really like yeah. it. So here's a really yeah. easy one for you. How many dark bindings have been cast in the LCS? Since when? Since this split. How many dark this bindings? Split, this split. How many split. times have pro players press Q in games this split? Playing Morgana. Do I have like a jar of MMs? Do you want a hint? Do you want a hint? I do. Here's your hint. Okay. There's no more than that. There's no hint. <laughs> There's no hint in here. You There's, dumped out all the money. The number, yeah. is, the number is greater no than the amount of money uh, in that game. Okay, so it's this split. Morgana Dark Bindings. Yeah. You're not even telling Basically, you how many, how many Morgana, Morgana games, games has, has Hakuo played. played and what's the average of Dark like, Bindings? Like, no one that plays more. There's like one game, you, two games. You, yeah, you're running out of time. I, mean, I know. We, we go through this every week. Did you feel our pain now? 187. You are so wrong. 576. 576. Shoot. How'd you not get that? Shoot. Come yeah. on. I was one third. Come on. <laughs> Close. All right. See? Doesn't feel so great, does it? I, I feel fine. Oh, that was really fun. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we should well, do that again. I'm looking forward to summer yeah. split now, guys. Aggressive plays can make a pro look like a god or like an idiot. And while the difference between the two can come down to finesse, sometimes all it takes is a partner in crime who's there to follow up. Just to say, I'm helping. Brought to you by State Farm. And while Svenskaren's Olaf did pick up early kills versus Team Liquid, it couldn't have happened without a well-placed lantern from Smoothie just four minutes into the game. Ben Scarrett just going with the Predator onto Povelter. Ben Scarrett flashing forward, looking to secure the kill here onto POB. A little bit more damage will do it. Jensen going in here as well. And first blood over to Ben Scarrett. And Smithy tries to fight him, but it's the a double, double kill. And the pull to safety. I'll be here first. I'll be here first. Way before Tom. Just come down. Oh, nice. Should we come in? Oh, yeah, come in. Okay, I don't have to. I'll you. be here. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I'm coming, I'm coming in. No fast, no, no fast gunner two. TP, 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 TP,
just as a refresher, we've brought in a Rush number. Guests. We have yeah, brought in a close. number of different guests. Guests throughout the split. Mm -hmm. We've had the coin. We had the darts throwing. We yeah. had the fans a couple times. We had Joel Twice. trying to help the we fans had out. So the cumulative prediction accuracy of those things is 42.9%. Really you guys bad. far yeah. outdo that prediction rate. But I am hoping that Vidius can uh, can strike right, back this time around. Let's take a look at this video. Hmm. Gentlemen, welcome to my humble abode. Uh, I am a little surprised that you would issue this challenge onto me, given that back in week three, on February 4th, one of your colleagues, uh, the Puerik or something along those lines, said to me to predict all of the day's outcomes, to which I did and was correct for all of them. Now, typically, I would not accept a secondary challenge. However, I saw the distress that my good friend and colleague Dash was in, and I've decided to lend a helping hand. So, for today's games, we will have <clears throat> Cloud9 securing the first win of the day. Clutch Gaming will be sure to follow up. TSM will take the third game. 100 Thieves will, in fact, defeat Echo Fox. And Team Liquid will secure the final win of the day. Now, I thought this was a little too easy, so I took it a step further. And based on my predictions, you will have a tiebreaker between Cloud9 and 100 Thieves, which I am expecting Ryu to be taken off the Talia and Cloud9 to be picking themselves up a strong bottom lane. Smoothie and Sneaky will be the ones to carry, and Cloud9 will secure that semi final spot. Now, gentlemen, I have crumpets on the way, so I must bid you adieu. So, toodle pip for now, and have a wonderful show. A little hard to understand. I think that's due to the Welsh accent yeah. and the the echo that that uh, just is, the is accent. Inherent. The echo yeah. was yeah, fine. The echo was fine. No, that, that's what, that's a part like of week the Welsh three accent. Or something? Uh, what was that? Yeah, week three. Yeah, what? He threw out some predictions. He claims he was five and zero. Oh, also, oh, he's got the same predictions as me. He just Here's copied. He throws he literally out the picked the favorites. Well, every I mean, can you blame him if they're actually going to win? Well, I just know that he's not going to beat me. That's true. Yeah. He, well, he did call out the tiebreaker, and, and the, so we might get to that the point. The only and have reason to use I, I had hundred these, maybe. and I, I need an upset here to to catch Jet. And I'm going to be really upset if you so catch I, me. So I, I had to pick one upset, and it felt like hundred these. You felt like Echo Fox upsetting. Isn't that crazy? That you have to say yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, there's so many playoff upset. versus non-playoff teams. It's like a crapshoot. If it's Clutch that loses the Golden Guardians or FlyQuest, so I didn't want to take a risk. I think Echo Fox has Demonte and Pop Chow again. Yeah. Like they're still moving around those. I'll wait for information on that. But those hundred these. That's man. why I'm saying they're the underdogs, but they're the closest to upset. Who would you pick for an upset? I, mean, I just wouldn't pick an upset. I'd right. win. Yeah, well, yeah. see, so, but that's because Jet's, that's because Jet's sitting pretty in the lead, man. He can just coast. It's up yeah. to you to catch him. That's what I'm trying from to do. this point onward. So we do have one differential in the analyst predictions that comes in game four. We'll have to see how they do. Now, Mark, you got help though uh, from uh, a social source today, as Jet's kind of been, you know, had the aid of his dog this entire yeah, split. He, it yeah. felt only natural that in week nine you get something. Yeah, he's got Kubo. I've seen, you know, Freak using puns. And I just felt a little left out. I don't yeah. have a pet or animal of my own, so I tried to make do as best I could. So who's this? Oh, this I'm, is you. Yeah, that's me. I'm setting up the, the flags. I tried to ask you to give me your flags, and you wouldn't yeah, share. Yeah, those flags are really hard to make. <laughs> They're not that hard. I made it with boy. chopsticks. Yeah, sit, sit. Is that your roommate? Oh, dear, yeah, so I don't have a dog, so I have a roommate. <laughs> My boy Zell, man. It's been a long time since Zell and I have uh, shared a screen together. Yeah, he was not nice. as, as excited boy. as your animals are. I was, I was trying to be encouraging. Mitch, he always picks the right one. <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. How do I know he doesn't? Also in the, the right CLG. One. Wearing the CLG again. shirt, yeah. picking oh, TSM. Oh, I just don't want to waste. And then the you eat the other. Oh, and then Mark. <laughs> I mean, they don't, the, I don't Mark, that, you didn't predict CLG. You don't want to overfeed your pets. That's so a good you got to pick them from themselves. Yeah, especially that human food, right? Yeah. You got to kind of, you got to balance that all out. <laughs> anyway, turning our attention to that first game, we've got Cloud Nine, who are in risk of losing their spot in the top two. Let's talk about both of these squads. Yeah, and C9 does need to turn it around. They have been talking a lot about how they are just trying to prepare for playoffs by picking the early game snowball compositions that they then need to complete to victory and that they could be winning more games because they know what they're best at and they're trying to become more flexible. But at a certain point, you got to win because they still don't want to give up that playoff by, especially 
after what happened in summer split last split where they've lost in quarterfinals. Like, right. C9's been the number three seed many times in their history and actually not even made semifinals. And so. an arguably more competitive top six, which makes it even yeah. scarier this time around. Yeah, it doesn't feel like anyone in quarters will be the favorite once you get into it. Uh, FlyQuest on the opposite side, though, of Cloud9, of course, out of the playoff picture, but would still like to end their season on a high note. Yeah, I mean, you see some of these teams just playing very loose and free mm -hmm. now that they're out of the playoffs. We saw it yesterday with Optic. They played that AP Ezreal and just had a crazy game. So I think FlyQuest will probably come in with a very similar mindset, and they could be the huge trigger if they win this game for that massive five-way tie that we're looking at. Minutes to go. Time for some win conditions. Jat, you're up first with Cloud9. Easy. Uh, oh, C9 yeah. win condition. I actually Easy. have a bit of a different one. It's get Licorice involved in the mid game, and this has a lot of assumptions attached to it uh, because I feel like their early game has been so reliable of actually giving them a win condition. Wherever Sven Siren goes, early game seems to be very effective for them. They've been snowballing bot pretty well, but then once they have that advantage, Licorice is just not getting involved. So yeah. they have to find a way, whether it's getting wards down so he can TP or actually moving top lane to push down his turrets uh, to make that work. Mark, you got fly quest. Yeah, so I have put Flame on a playmaker as well as defend your bot lane. Jazz talking about how good they are at snowballing around their bot lane, especially with Sven Skarin, so defend that. And then Flame has a tendency to like to play these kind of like one-on-one -on -one isolated matchups, the GP, the NAR, back in the day Renekton, but you really need to have a bigger influence in the mid game than Licorice get around the map. Romy, you just heard about the same kind of idea as him. Yeah. There you have it. Last day of the regular season. Time to throw it out to the Battle Arena to get it on our way.